hardest battle and Aurora's possession. Sorry, possession of Claire explained Eminence in Shadow cut content from any news. Let's see what he has to say. Normally, Eminence in Shadow doesn't miss anything. Okay. Every scene is as accurate as possible, and the anime even goes so far as to add its own original content sometimes. But well, wait, when wait. it came to the big wait, 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 wait. The anime even goes so far as to add its own original content. Aurora teasing the I am the all range atomic. That was enemy only? Because I thought this scene was more hype than the um, I am recovery atomic. At a certain point, I don't think these variations of I am atomic is going to entertain you more and more. But different moments like this when Aurora fakes you out, that really makes it special. I, this is anime only? That's insane. Whoever thought of doing this, like, bravo. This made the episode for me. Holy shit. Sometimes. Well, when it came to the big fight between Sid and Elizabeth, there were a few creative decisions made that changed a bit of the narrative. Beta's adoration was a little less dramatic, Sid's fight was watered down to be a bit less epic, and I'm sure Aurora's possession left some of you asking how. So- That was pretty crazy. Uh, and you know what? Like, as soon- Because, like, look at this. Look, look, look at how she- uh, Look at this. Because as soon as uh, Claire was possessed by Aurora, the first thing I noticed was the bust size difference, because I was like, huh? Because she did this pose, and I'm like, hold up, she's not this big. And then I looked at her hair, it's like, wait, wait, what's going on here? Aurora's possession left some of you asking how. So, in addition to how Sid versus the Blood Queen really went, I'll also clarify all- Did you have to put her in those bloomers? What was the point of this? <laughs> I mean, like, I, it, usually, in these kind of animes, if you're gonna have a scene where, like, a character, like, passes out or something, and, and they're, like, monologuing with their inner demons or whatever, it's in, like, a cool, different place. It's, like, ominous and, I don't know. Like a dungeon cell or something, but Eminence and Shadow's like, nah, 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 fuck that shit. We're, what are we gonna do? We're we gonna put this girl in high school bloomers or middle school bloomers, I don't even know. And then <laughs> we're gonna talk as if it's like a regular school life scenario with the nurse. It's like fantastic, genius. All that stuff with Claire and Aurora. It's a massive chunk of lore that's actually quite interesting. One that adds quite a bit of depth to a deeper plot that we don't see. Yeah, I'm not gonna act like I understood a shit that happened there. I was too busy focused on other stuff. Much of. Let's get started. Episode 23, The Hour of Awakening, is covering near. Chapter 3 from Volume 3 of the Light Novel. That is such a cool cover. Is that supposed to be John Smith? Is that John Smith art? That Yukime John Smith cover here looks sick. Starting things off here with Crimson, I suppose one of the first creative differences is the way that Sid had decided to take care of him. Again, like, at a certain point, you're gonna run out of different I'm Atomics to do, so this is like a sneaky one. It's like, show up, shut the fuck up, Crimson, you're monologuing? Nah, yeet! It wasn't a silent nuke like the one that we got in the anime, but instead a series of attacks similar to Atomic Samurai. Even that was anime only. Wow. Right from One Punch Man. Sid had started by slicing Crimson's body in huh. half, but after seeing the Red Moon regenerate him no problem, he quickly started hacking off even more body parts. I guess if you go with the theme of, you know, Eminence in Shadow and Sid just doing random shit, I, I, I think him taking him out while he's monologuing with the silent I'm Atomic is much funnier and on brand compared to, I guess, this fight. It was the arms and legs, then torso and thighs, then before Crimson knew it, he was being diced into pieces faster than he could regenerate. Crimson was already on the defensive, but no matter how hard he focused and tried to react, I guess this is like a, a, like a, the cool thing about this is maybe we cut him once and Crimson's like, ha, I have the power of the red moon, I can, re I can regenerate all I want. And then it's like, oh, really? How about I cut you at a rate that you can't even keep up the regeneration speed with? And I guess that's really cool. He couldn't even see the blade that was hitting him. It was as if parts of his body were falling off automatically. I completely forgot about this dude, the fucking guard, like what happened to him after? <laughs> Wait, no, Shadow just bodied him afterwards, right? And that was it. I think that's the last we saw of so, him. So, the moment Crimson realized Shadow was a whole universe ahead of him, that's when he would beg to talk things out. A few seconds was all it took to realize that his death was imminent. Bruh. It was before he could even finish his sentence though that Shadow would stab his heart and turn him to dust, leaving no one else but Elizabeth's coffin and the mangled sacrifice in front of him. Sid would then go on to inspect both, but after seeing neither them nor Crimson were the Blood Queen, he would assume she was either missing, never existed, or already dead, leading him to retrieve the thousand pieces of gold he left in the vault. It's when Claire and Mary- <laughs> Mongo panel, bro. I'm here to save you, Sid. 
come here and die, you fucking vampires. And Mary's like, sorry, Mary is like, I'm a vampire too. We finally arrive after that. Claire would actually mistake the sacrifice for Sid, just like how she had done in the first episode. Again? <laughs> oh no, my poor Sid. And she she finds that it's not actually Sid. Eh, who the fuck are you? <laughs> Throws the fucking head. It wasn't as drawn out as it was then, but it was definitely a solid few moments where Claire They're having a moment like this. When did she realize? Would weep as if the sacrifice was. <laughs> She's actually and crying. Stopping after finally looking down. Eh, hold up. Down and seeing that the severed head wasn't his. It's not that big of a deal, but I do find it funny that they decided to recycle the same gag from the first episode. Yeah. Now, something worth noting about Elizabeth's behavior after this is that it didn't matter whether you were a vampire. So flat. So flat. You're a human. If Lolly vampire, I guess I don't know. If you were a living creature, then Elizabeth would hunt you. So, if you're wondering why she didn't recognize Mary as her once close companion, it's because the red moon and her insatiable hunger made her. Bro, this scene is crazy. What the fuck is this angle? Why is she holding onto the bed sheets like that? Bro, again, as soon as I see this, what I remember is Edina Rize. Window open back shots from Body Gotti. Season 2. Her blind to it. The only thing she could focus on now was feeding. Had it been Crimson standing there instead. Look how amazing these like vampires look, right? Look how cool they are. Look how much pop their collars are. Holy shit. And they just get immediately trounced. Like Crimson did not matter. Then he too would have been skewered just like how Claire was. In fact, it was actually his plan to go into hiding until she was satiated. That was the only way to avoid the wave of destruction she was about to create. So, with Mary seeing everything around her as nothing more than food, no one was safe from the inevitable carnage, leading Beta and her unit to step in and stop her. Ruku, the ruku, reason ruku. Beta hadn't stepped in earlier was because that realization Sid had other priorities had come too late. That's right. These coins are more important than protecting our waifus. I will not lose a single one of them. That's right. To her. She wasn't able to figure out that Claire's safety was being left to her fast enough making her think the entire thing was a big failure on her part. When we get to the ensuing fight with her unit and Elizabeth, this was another scene where the anime had taken quite a few creative liberties. Oh? You see, rather than Rose and Wait, 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 wait. I think I saw something there I shouldn't have. Hold up. Where the anime had Hold up. Frame by frame. Frame by frame. Frame by frame. Watch. That's what I saw. Okay, the hand was still covering the nipples. I thought for a second they flashed us. For a second I thought they actually Lip did. No, no, it's... it's it's safe. You see, no, oh, not safe. Rather than Rose and 665 being the ones getting caught here, it was actually 664, 665, and Beta. Elizabeth. Ah, uh, of course. It's 664, 665, and of course. How could I have not realized it was 665 and 664? Of course. Elizabeth had used her body to hold all three of their swords. Beta was insightful enough to change her sword's form to escape, but with 664 and 665 being. One of them is Nami. The one on the left is Nami? Is it? I don't know, but we saw these two girls and they're just always like eating. Being novices, they unfortunately didn't see that fast enough. By the time they had realized that was their only way of escaping, Elizabeth was already sweeping downwards with a deadly claw attack. So, the person who had jumped in to save them was actually Rose and her They didn't show this? Roku 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 didn't get the action she deserved in the anime even though it happened in the manga? What the fuck? Beautiful display of swordsmanship. She had cut Elizabeth's limbs and given the other two- Bro, I wanted her to get in the action, but like, she was pretty much put on the bench. Man, what the fuck? ...to an opening to do even more damage. It was when Beta saw this that she finally understood- Well done, number 666. Roku, Roku, Roku. ...did why Lambda had assigned them to her. The three of them together made an excellent unit. 664 had the leadership, 665 mm. had the wisdom- Borgar. ...meant intellect. Wait, what did you just say? Six four had the leadership. Like this girl has the leadership. Hard to believe looking at this face. And then ship six six five had the wisdom and intellect. Then this is the face of wisdom and intellect. <laughs> okay. Then six 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 wrapped it all together with incredible ruku 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 haircut battle prowess. They were an incredible team that made Beta think perhaps they could actually win this. They weren't nearly at the disadvantage. Is this trio, 664, 665, 666, going to be an actual trio team that's going to be important for the future? Like, is this an established group that, like, rises up the ranks? Because, like, why would the anime dedicate the screen time to these characters if not you know, for the fact that they're going to actually rise up in the ranks together? That'd be really cool if they did, right?
maybe i don't know they'll challenge the because the, like the rules from the last anime's videos we saw it's like um these are the unnamed right so basically you have the seven shades which are the main seven girls and then from numbers eight to 25 is the named shadows which are like i don't know like um kai and omega or something like that right and then everybody below that until 666 is just like the unnamed girls. And in order to advance in rankings, you need to initiate a duel with the double digit number or be acknowledged by one of the seven shades themselves to get into, you know, the, the named rank. So maybe we're going to witness the rise of this trio platoon with Roku 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 centered in it. She thought they'd be at end with their offensive seeming to do solid damage. Beta truly believed the four of them together could handle well done 666 we might still be able to do this man she was getting credit from beta and everything too bro we missed such important moments it. even more so when yukime and the juggernaut arrived i found it interesting the anime made it seem like yukime was trying to flee since in actuality she was the first one to join the fight out of yukime joined in on the fight like this too bro why did they skip so many good scenes I guess the anime just didn't have enough time to pack it in because most of the fight was centered around, I guess, Shadow versus. Y you know what they should have done? They should have fucking shortened the amount of exposition between Claire and fucking Aurora. Because, like, let's get real. It's important stuff, right? We need to understand that. But let's get real. All that shit could be. Is could have been shortened much more and say, hey, if you really want to know, fucking go check out the light novel, watch fucking Annie News video. But r instead of that, they should have dedicated more time for fucking Roku Roku Roku, you know, the rest of her platoon and, and Yukimi getting in on it too. Oh, man. I'm just, I'm just upset about Oriana not getting the, the recognition she deserves. Everyone. You see, as soon as she had made it up the tower, she had instantly offered to join forces with Beta. If not for Juggernaut storming in right after, then... Okay, this dude Juggernaut, like, he's just dumb as fuck, right? If not for Juggernaut. This dude got bodied by everybody, and at the very end, even witnessing the battle between, like, Elizabeth and Sid, he was like, damn. Shadow Garden, that's my next target. It's like, bro, are you fucking serious? You're either incredibly dumb, which is likely the case, or you're incredibly smart, which is probably not. He's like Delta. Yeah, he had the audacity to say that. Like, bro is so fucking dumb, but I mean, he's a juggernaut. It kind of goes with his brand. He's not supposed to be thinker, right? He just fucking goes in, tanks shit. Juggernaut storming in right after, then all five of these women would have fought together. Now, Juggernaut's attempt at fighting went on a bit longer in the novels, but what I feel... We wasted the fucking Rose animation, bro. The Oriana development for this motherfucker in the lingerie covering his nipples. Fuck this guy. At least show the nipples. It's worth pointing out is the move that Elizabeth had used to beat him. It was a special ability called Mist Form that's typically innate to vampires. Mist Form? The normal version usually has a lead up that then turns the vampire's entire body to mist, but the one for Elizabeth is a bit more specialized. Look how bored she looks. Look at this slash, look at Juggernaut's face. He's like, holy fuck. I am done, bro. I am done. <laughs> he realizes he fucked up, maybe. And Elizabeth... She just, my lady's a slow riser. She's just waking up, but look how uninterested she is. Than that. Not only does it turn her body intangible instantaneously, but her oh. mist form doesn't even have to- What is this, like a low key of fruit? She just turned intangible? To affect her entire body. Whatever body part Elizabeth wants to turn into mist, she can do so freely and without any lead up whatsoever. Making it so she can both- It's the mist mist fruit. Dodge and attack simultaneously. When Elizabeth proceeded to rain down blood after this, it wasn't 664 and 665 who had protected Claire, but instead... Roku, Roku, Roku. ...dead Beta and her expertise with slime manipulation. Never mind. She... Beta looks incredibly stacked here. I didn't realize that she was so st What the fuck? Wow, they gave her some upper titty injuries. Wow. That's amazing. I didn't realize Beta had got it like that. The manga Beta is kind of cracked, huh? ...used her body to cover Claire. Yes, I see her body all right. Hardened slime at whatever vitals were exposed, then used her remaining slime to cut down as many arrows as she could. Of course, several projectiles still got through, but the damage done was mostly to areas like her cheeks, arms, and thighs. Upper titties, don't forget that. Eyes. As for 664, 665, and 666, the first two were both bleeding out rather quickly, while Aww. Rose had managed to protect herself quite Let's go! Rad Roku 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 still standing up, that's my girl! 664 and 665 had deep lacerations. Rose's injuries were mostly cuts. So, out of all those present during this deadly bombardment, 
Yukime and Rose took the least damage while the- That's a lot to say, man. Look at this. Look, of all the people gathered here- Juggernaut and the others unfortunately weren't so lucky. Orion would body Juggernaut, bro. Now, since Elizabeth was able to infect them with what's pretty much a variant of possessed blood, that's how she was able to re-trigger all their possessions. Oh, I, I, I didn't understand that part. I did not understand that part. It's like, why did they all start getting triggered too? But it's like, no, no, the blood, the blood, remember the blood, the progenitor blood the, and how it relates to Diablos. What's pretty much a variant of possessed blood. Yeah. That's how she was able to re-trigger all their possessions. Remember, possession is simply an overload of mana. Mm -hmm. Sid had saved the possessed by giving them control over it again, but with Elizabeth adding one more layer to the mix, her blood and her absolute power over it was able to manually trigger an overload of mana again. Beta had tried to suppress it Nice. Nice. ...and reduce its output, but no matter how much she tried to control it, the mana inside of her just continued spiraling out of control, eventually causing the symptoms of possession to start and take form around where the blood arrows had hit. Dude, this possession animation is so gross. They just turn into these blobs. Now, it's around here that Claire was visited by Aurora, so if you were confused as to how this happened and what they were talking about, allow me to make things a little- I kind of already understand. I wait, what? I so Claire actually is a descendant of the progenitor vampire, right? I don't know how that's possible, because that implies that Baldi, you know, our dad, no? That's not the case. Where did she get the blood from from the beginning? Because I assumed that she had like dormant genes. That's why Aurora was able to just get in. Where did she get the progenitor vampire blood from then? Was it because that she was getting attacked by Elizabeth? And because Elizabeth was doing all these different attacks, Aurora basically then took advantage. Why didn't Aurora possess the other girls? Why Claire? Because all the other girls, you know, have the same blood, dormant genes, progenitor vampire variants, right? So why is it only Claire? that Aurora was able to kind of like possess. A little bit clearer for you. With Aurora having been freed from the shackles of Sanctuary, her essence was essentially free to do whatever it wanted now. I don't think she could have possessed just anyone, but with Claire now having both progenitor blood and possessed blood in her. Progenitor and possess. I think that's a condition because she did say that she, because like even when this arc started, she mentioned that like, um. She was actually like, uh, when talking to Mary, I think she specifically said that. What did she, what did she say? She, she mentioned something about her being like possessed and like that one day something with a consumer or something. It's that combination which brought her closer to the. It's not just the progenitor blood from the Elizabeth known. It's a combination of the two. She already had dormant, po like, possessed blood, right? The original bloodline. The OG blood that had originated from Aurora. So, since all the girls had been hit by Elizabeth's blood arrow, yeah. that meant that all now carried trace amounts of progenitor blood, and it implies that Aurora could have possessed any of them. Any of them, exactly, any of them. But why Claire, other than that she's a main character's sister, you know? It's just since Claire happens to be Sid's sister, she Really? She's the one that Aurora preferred to possess. It is that simple. It, it is as simple as, well, she's the main character's sister. I sh I'll take it, sure, whatever. As for the specifics of what these two talked about, the stuff about evolution was to highlight the difference between choosing to adapt and just so happening to adapt. One theory suggests that apes adapted over the years out of necessity, whereas the other theory infers that it wasn't so autonomous. What I mean is that it's not like the apes knew that they had to adapt in order to survive. Isn't it more of environmental things that causes the necessity for survival? So like, for example, like a fish in like a really low oxygen environment will adapt such that they require less oxygen to live throughout their generations. Isn't that the whole point of evolution? It's like you, you, you're born as this thing and then due to different environmental cues, you will either survive or you'll die. And that's how adaptation kind of works. What makes a lot more sense to Aurora is that even among apes, there were smarter ones than stupid ones. Ooh, the monkey. smarter ones learned how to survive in their harsh environment, and by surviving and breeding with others just like them, the stupid ones would die out and... <laughs> so basically, eugenics. We were just casually talking about eugenics. Natural selection. <laughs> eugenics. You know, survival of the fittest. Dumb ones die, smart monkeys live. Leave only smart ones. 
This process would continue for generations, and eventually we get to the evolution of smarter apes into humans. Yeah. So those And then at a certain point, it actually regresses because now it's not about just like survival. Now we have all these different modern technology and medicine and these different um, social benefits. And we don't have to, you know, go outside and fucking hunt, you know, a fucking saber wolf tiger to survive. Nah, everybody can just exist. And, you know, I think we're going back. I'm not saying we need eugenics. No, 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 no. I'm just saying that survival of the fittest, you know, stopped happening ever, ever since, you know, modern civilization took upon. The end result for both theories was essentially the same. Just because the apes happened to adapt to their environment didn't mean that they did so by choice. No. This wasn't something the apes knew had to happen, but was instead a form of evolution closely tied to Darwinism. Survival of the fittest. to the next part, then, is that possessed blood and progenitor blood are a product of exactly that. Aurora's okay. original blood was what was initially being passed down, but okay. since the power within was too much for any single person to handle, all descendants possessing it died out. The ones who received it simply weren't... So these are the stupid monkeys. <laughs> I'm sorry. ...able to adapt to it. Somewhere down the line between all the experiments and the creation of the three heroes, though. And then these are the smart blood monkeys. Split and pass on to others. Yes, the blood actually split and pass on to others. Like, I heard someone talk about that, too. Except, rather than being the original uncontrollable blood of Auroras, this time it was either progenitor blood or possessed blood. Both were similarly powerful as we've seen in the anime, but the properties of each were completely... For free, bro? Like, all the body parts you're going to show right there. You're just going to show them toes right here for free, bro? Come on now. I know what you're doing. Completely different. Not only that, but the division of said properties made controlling the blood way more manageable. So, as the years went on and generations continued, Aurora's blood being split was a product of that Darwinist evolution. Those who possessed it and survived adapted to it, and the result of that adaptation was the possessed blood and progenitor blood. It's not like they knew that they had this magically unstable blood within them, but by being the ones to survive with it, only their bloodlines would be the ones to continue forward. Basically, and now I'm not sure if I completely understand this, the origins is Aurora's progenitor vampire blood. But somewhere along the lines, shit got split to Darwinism, survival of fittest, and now we have possessed blood. We have progenitor blood. And because they both were present in Claire, and because Claire is Sid's sister, Aurora was able to take a hold of her. That's, that's pretty much it. The most simplest as it takes, I think. Leading to the current day where you either have these vampires or magically gifted powerhouses. Now, since this blood had split for a reason, it makes sense that neither Claire nor anyone else could handle the two reuniting with each other. Hold on. But this reuniting... No other girl, no other girl has both bloods reuniting, right? It's only Claire who is super special because most other girls just have the possessed blood that they're able to control, right? But the other girls did, upon getting attacked by the progenitor vampire, they should have traces of this blood too. But Claire is the most special one, right? Because Aurora decided to possess her and combine basically this and this together, I think, right? So Claire is like more special than the other girls who, because Claire has both of these bloods, while the other girls don't really, even though they did get attacked by Elizabeth technically, right? Something like that? The combined result is bringing them closer to the original, and it's their inability to adapt to it that's making their bodies deform out of control like this. Doesn't this imply that Aurora could technically possess any of the other girls too, that in this... Like, Aurora could literally just be take over Oriana if she wanted. Isn't that true? Doesn't she have that? Because, like, if, if they still have the traces of the progenitor blood, right? Not, not any other. Well, Elizabeth is still around. She's still around. She can still, you know, attack the other girls. But, like, so far, only the people at that last battle who were hit by Elizabeth's blood they contain still traces of it. So they're the only candidates that Aurora could also take you know, possession of. But she can't like take possession of, let's say, Epsilon or Alpha because they weren't there. The innate power of it is simply too much to handle for them. So with no way to control it whatsoever, Aurora would bestow Claire with a seal that would teach her how to control it. The most chuny symbol, bro. <laughs> She's probably jealous. Sid is probably jealous of this, right? It's like, God damn, where did she get that from? I don't think it's related to how she possessed Claire, but the seal does grant her power beyond that which she previously had. 
What does the seal do? It provides a way to handle both the mana rich bloods flowing through her. Okay, sure. It's just cool activation sign, you know? Whenever she wants to power up, <laughs> fucking... <laughs> and she transforms. It's, it's really cool. Okay, switching back to the stuff that Eminence and Shadow is more known for, you'll be surprised to know that Aurora didn't actually try and... I'm Hold up, guys. Is this... The girl that's nutting right now, is this Beta or is this Nami? Is this Beta or is this Nami? This is Nami, right? I think this... This is Beta? I was right? That is beta? Okay, I was correct then. Because some people were like, no, that's Nami. And it's like, oh, oh, are you sure? Okay, okay. Because beta was like actually nutting, right? She was looking like Delta whenever Aurora was about to do I'm Atomic. Because she started to immediately notice. She's like, what? Hold the fuck up. That's my master's magic. Aurora didn't actually try an I'm Atomic here. Yeah. No, that was yet another. All range Atomic. Because that's the only thing she heard. But it's anime only. This never happened in the manga, which is so cool. Their creative difference from the anime. Whoever decided to put this in the anime, they deserve everything and more. This was the best point of the episode for me. Absolutely. More so than Recovery Atomic. I don't think Recovery Atomic was meant to be hype. I think Recovery Atomic was meant to be like a closure of this arc. You know, it kind of fakes you out. It's like, oh, Recovery Atomic. Okay, what does it actually do? Just heals everyone. Fine, we can go with it. But this was the real hype moment. What she did instead was fight close range with a scythe made of her own blood, then counter Elizabeth's feelers with feelers of her own. Okay. The sets of projectiles would then crash into each other, and as the room they were in would fill with this bloody mist, Elizabeth would unknowingly go on to inhale some of it. Since that was the very moment Aurora had been waiting for, what initially seemed like an even battle quickly turned to a one-sided onslaught as Aurora would really? incapacitate Elizabeth near instantly. Really? This is not the faith that she was making when she was fighting Juggernaut, but goddamn, really, Aurora was, like, overwhelming her? With Aurora's blood now within Elizabeth, Aurora- Because the only reason why Aurora was taken out of the battle in the anime is because she tried to do the I Am Atomic, but then it was too much for her current body to handle, right? So it kind of her arm snapped. She's like, oh, this sucks. So obviously she's incredibly powerful, but there needs to be a way to, like, nerf her. That's how Aurora was kind of taken out, but- she just overwhelmed her like that in the manga? Or could attack from both the inside and outside. Damn. She would make Elizabeth bleed from every orifice, then bombard her with an attack that she couldn't defend. In the manga, it looks still more like Claire than Aurora here, huh? Right? This just looks like Claire's face to me. And against. By the end, all that was left of her was nothing more than a puddle. An unrecognizable pool of red that somehow still wasn't enough to kill her. So, would that be- This is still Claire. So I guess in the manga, they don't go out of their way to actually like transform her into Aurora's like face and everything whenever she gets possessed by Aurora. For whatever reason. I think it's cooler when, you know, it's Aurora. Well, then again, seeing Claire do shit like that's really cool too. Being everything Aurora could do as Claire, it was just enough to buy time for Shadow to get there. A dramatic entrance shown mm. mostly from Beta's perspective. Much of her thoughts were mostly the same, but it's the way that they were delivered that made it seem like the situation was a lot more serious. I will know. You know, he says something like, I will not lose a single one of them. You see, the increasingly apparent feeling that something was off, combined with Sid's lack of offensive movement, made Beta emotional to the point that she was crying. It wasn't a happy emotional like how the anime portrayed, but instead what? a devastating sorrow since Shadow had actually taken a hit from Elizabeth. <laughs> I guess the manga's a bit more serious. I don't know. But the anime when Beta was just like nutting was pretty funny to me. He was flung into the wall as if hit by a truck. He didn't actually take any damage, but from the perspective of Beta, it looked like Shadow was losing. Why was he losing here? I think it's something to do with protecting the coins. And all because he was protecting them. Them as in the coins he stole. So Beta would curse her own weakness and yell to her master, all while dragging her crippled body ever closer to the point of impact. She was definitely in no state to be moving, but no amount of pain was going to stop her from crawling to him. It was a truly heartbreaking moment to- Where did Beta's upper titty injuries go? I saw the cuts in the upper boobies. It's no longer present. My immersion is ruined. In which Beta thought she was about to lose everything. Of course, Sid was completely fine, but it's the way that Beta perceived it that makes it seem like he wasn't. As for the way things really were, well, despite Elizabeth being even stronger now, Sid's initial confrontation was nothing more than feints. Both seemed as if they were evenly matched, but in actuality they were just trying to get a feel for each other. 
where Sid started to look like he was at a distance. Remember, it's a conversation, right? Whatever, whenever Sid fights, it's about a conversation. He wants to see if they can converse with him and truly see if he's, she's worthy of his blade. The advantage was when Elizabeth had used her blood to create two clones of herself. Oh? They were crimson copies just as Never happened in the anime. Relentless as the original. Since the person they were attacking was Sid, though, not even three of them was enough to catch him. It didn't matter if they came from every angle because Sid's defensive movements made it seem like he already knew where they would attack from. What made Beta think that something was off was that none of these movements were leading to a counterattack. Because of the coins, because if he did a counterattack, maybe the coins would slip out of his pockets. It was as if he was currently being limited by something. Yes, yes. I mean, yes. sure, three Elizabeths were definitely a lot, but we all know Shadow can easily counterattack anything. He's always dodging with an undetectable- Yeah, the whole point of the conversation is to do a bunch of reading and read the opponent and movement and spacing so that he can launch a counterattack. We learned that in the last Andy News video. ...full amount of movements, then using whatever excess space he makes to immediately shift into a counterattack. Yeah. Since none of that was happening this time, though, Beta could tell that Shadow was sluggish. His movements were slow and he was actually using his sword to block I wonder attacks, why. Something he almost never does if he's making his way towards a counterattack. Not only that, but this was also the longest fight that Shadow had ever been part of. Oh? So, once Sid had finally... That's actually a huge credit to Elizabeth, even though, you know, he was intentionally nerfing himself with weighing down with the coins, but... The opponent that lo lasted longest with shit, like Sid, that's Elizabeth. ...gotten hit. That's when he set aside the goal <laughs> that... <laughs> okay, that's a funny panel. <laughs> he had it all in his sleep. <laughs> ...he was carrying and decided oh, what, to bro? take him seriously and fight for real. A colossal mantle of energy now surrounded him. He may have looked a little bit smaller, but Shadow was very clearly brimming with power now. A funny thing to note is that Beta did spot a pile of coins back by the wall where Shadow had made impact. She didn't think much of it though, because with Shadow being completely fine now, everything else was just irrelevant. Now, the way that Sid had approached Elizabeth was by simply walking towards her straight through whatever attacks. That oh she my god. At. He's in there the classic no walking. The pace that he was walking. Whenever he just starts walking on you, bro, shit gets so hype. I think the first time we saw this was like against, uh, what's her name? Beatrice. He does a flash step, but then continues to just like walk on her. That's it. That's all he did. Just pressure just by walking. And every projectile Elizabeth threw was dodged with the tiniest amount of movements. So while Sid was in fact dodging everything, the minuscule motions he made while doing so made it seem as if the attacks were just missing. Impossible. It was as if Sid was walking in a straight line with zero effort whatsoever. Almost like Elizabeth's attacks weren't even worth paying attention to. They're not though, they're when not worth paying attention. Tried to get close and pressure him, Sid simply dodged before it could even get to him. He then just continued walking without so much of an acknowledgement of them. His focus solely set on the real Blood Queen. Now, for all those who are watching this, only Yukime understood exactly what she was looking at. Oh? To her, this shadow figure had attained the ideal. His martial skill was at a level that people could only dream. Like, even Beta couldn't tell this, but Yukime could. Like, even his own, like, girls had no understanding. But Yukime did. That's kind of hype. Dream of. The absolute top that could only be described as perfection. So, Sid's footsteps would continue to sound at a constant tempo, then by the time they would stop, that's when Sid would be face to face with Elizabeth. A brief silence would occur as the two would pause and do nothing, yet, as we know with Sid and powerful opponents, conversations are happening. That's right, conversations! Different. Sid would then pose one simple question, and it's moments after that that he would know what <laughs> so, needs to be done now. So edgy. So, it was as Sid would charge his final attack that Mary would misinterpret it as one that would kill Elizabeth. She would rush over to jump between her and Sid's blade, but before she could, Elizabeth Here it comes. would knock her away. Recovery! This wasn't because Elizabeth was still on the offensive, though, but instead more so an indication that Elizabeth had finally remembered her. Oh, Reason she's like protecting that, Mary? While she was using her blood to knock Mary away, she okay. was also staring gently towards her as if to say that she was sorry. A clear indication that this wasn't the same bloodthirsty Elizabeth from just a few moments ago. Atomic recovery would then heal everyone everywhere, and that would even scale. What the fuck is going on here, bro? Paul, what were you doing, bro? What, what are you moments ago? Atomic recovery would then heal everyone because everywhere, and Skill was the one that was turned. But why is Poe on top of Skill right now, trying to give him like CPR? What is 
What is going on? I, I, what? Why? I, I don't understand if this is scale on top of foe trying to like trying to take a bite of him because he turned into a ghoul. What is going on here? That would be that for the Blood Queen. What the fuck, dude? What is going on? Bite. The only. And again, Goldie and Quentin, bro. These two, Skell and Poe, Goldie and Quentin, they're fucking same. Yes, exactly. Poe wasn't infected. That's what I'm saying. Poe wasn't. Why would a non infected person be on top of an infected person trying to give him mouth to mouth? I don't understand if Poe was infected and Poe was the ghoul and Skell wasn't. That would make sense. But what the fuck is going on here? And again, Quentin and Goldie, I think they're the exact same as Poe and Skell. I think this is just time scale. This is Poe right here. And this is Skell. The only thing worth mentioning after is that Beta. Okay, bro, what is up with that? Mary, I know they shared a kiss. I know they shared a kiss. I know they shared a kiss. But they get so intimate at times, bro. They get so intimate. <laughs> like a head to head. <laughs> There is that Beta and the others now have some form of vampiric powers. The extent of them aren't really known, but after being wait, 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 Implying Oriana could turn into Aurora, like Nanami, and a 664, 665, 66. They can all turn into a Beta Can too. Will this be important in the future? I don't know, but I don't think a lot of people paid attention. Like, if I didn't watch this video, I would never fucking understand what was going on, right? Like, anime onlys are gonna get fucking mind blown when one of the girls turn into Aurora in the future. And they're like, what? I thought Claire could only do that. And Elizabeth is still around. I doubt she's going to come back just to give us more dosage of vampire blood so that Aurora could turn into one of the other girls that wasn't infected yet, but it's still a chance. ...have some form of vampiric powers. The extent of them aren't really known, but after being exposed to progenitor blood, Beta is able to manipulate her blood now. Damn. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this episode. I know I said I would do... There it, it is, energy, Gamma cover! Surprisingly, this episode had quite a bit going on for it. So, what do you guys think about all this lore stuff so far? What I think is, this shit's too fucking complicated to me. I'm just a dumb monkey reactor that just goes, oh, oh, big boobs. But, thank God we have people like Annie News that will actually do the research and tell me exactly what is going on. So I have an understanding of what the story is. Please go give him a like. Subscribe to his video if you haven't. Amazing videos as usual. And another dub, Eminence and Shadow. Bro, I love his Eminence and Shadow videos.